Hi, I'm Eric Ginsberg, clarinet professor at Western Illinois University and member of the Camerata Woodwind Quintet. Last year, I made a video of rows Etude 15 and Etude 26. Now I'm going to discuss Etudes 14 and 5, the Etudes that are required for ILMEA auditions this year. Then I'll perform them for you. Let's start with number 14. Since it is in D major, spend time in the D major scale, D major arpeggio, and just for fun, D major thirds. You're swimming the D major C, so get used to the water. And when I play scales, I always play them with different articulations and different rhythms. I like to practice anything and everything I'll encounter in a piece of music. Number 14 is marked Tempo di Polacca, referring to the style of Polish peasant dance that is usually in 3-4 time, like a polonaise. A piece in Tempo di Polacca is often showy and ornate. And like Chopin's polonaises, this one has plenty to keep our fingers and chops busy. First things first. Subdivide like your life depends upon it. Your life as a clarinet player certainly will. All dotted notes and notes that are tied all need an active practice of subdivision. I like to articulate the subdivisions. This gives me the physical sensation of subdividing. Measures one, three, four, five are examples. So right from the start, you've got to be subdividing. Keep a very strict rhythm in measure 18 and 22 with the grace notes very close to the eighth notes. This gives character to the music and helps to keep the rhythm clean. Large leaps, like in measures 37 and 38, are best prepared on the lower note. Lots of support and a firm embouchure. This helps us to sing through the interval so that we can be as expressive as clarinetistically possible. Measure 45 is another spot where this is very important. You might have a question about how to play that darn turn in measure 51. A turn starts on the note it follows, moves up a note, returns to the original note, dips below ever so briefly to C sharp, and back to the G, then to the next printed note. You can't add any extra time, so you must steal some time from the first note. It ends up resulting in a five note ornament. General things. Take a good, calm breath, subdivide, keep your air moving, always listen to the center in your tone, and always keep a beautiful concept of tone in your head. Keep your embouchure firm.
So now we're in G major. Let's start with scales and arpeggios again. Adagio, the tempo marking for number five, means slow and leisurely. Think of it as an aria in an opera. Subdividing is important, once again and always. But in slower pieces, try to think in larger metrical units. You will be able to play with longer phrases and have a better sense of the direction of the music. For good clarinet hygiene, avoid hopping around on the same side of the clarinet. You must always alternate little fingers. Measure five, play B on the right side, C sharp on the left, and in measure 26, I stay on the right side for both the C sharp and B. Once again, all measures with notes that are tied get subdivided. Measure two, three, four, five, etc. They're all over the place. This is particularly important in measure 31 and 32, so that we make a difference between 16th and 32nd notes. Once again, support your large interval leaps so you can get up to the altissimo with confidence and don't have to rely on a heavy tongue to produce the note. Generally speaking, always use extra fingers for throat tones often called resonating fingerings. This helps pitch and tone color and is vital for playing smoothly and evenly through that register. Find the beauty in this piece. Think of it as a love song. The composer is talking to you when you play, but through you as well, to anyone you think may be listening. And we're all listening.
Thanks for listening to me. Contact me with your thoughts or questions, and happy practicing.